island hopping. Oh no. In the previous video, I went into heavy detail about how you can village your hunt by using your campsite. But this time, <laughs> we're going to break down the crazy meta that is villager hunting by island hopping. Before you make your journey out, you're gonna need a couple of things. One, a bunch of Nook Miles tickets. By a bunch, I don't mean 20, I mean like 100. And that's only if you're lucky. The second requirement is an open plot on your island. Otherwise, the mystery islands will be void of intelligent life and only consist of resources, bugs, fish, etc. Villager hunting by island hopping is horribly tedious because of how the game decides which villagers will appear on the island. And like the flying, that stuff kind of sucks too. The game first rolls a specific species. There are 35 different species in the game, so there is a 1 in 35 chance that the type of animal you are looking for will be picked. The game then rolls for a specific villager in that species. Each species has a different number of villagers. For example, there are 23 different cat villagers in the game, while there are only 3 octopi. There's a pretty simple math equation to figure out the chances of getting a specific villager. Let's take the octopi example. There's a 1 in 35 chance that an octopus will show up. Next, there is a 1 in 3 chance that the specific octopus villager you're looking for will be picked. Multiplying these fractions together results in a 1 in 105 chance of a specific octopus villager showing up. Now let's do the same with the cats. 1 in 35 chance times a 1 in 23 chance gets you a 1 in 805 chance of a specific cat villager showing up. Now, this is probably where your logic brain goes, Hey, Cora, there are only 391 villagers in the game. How the heck is there a 1 in 805 chance that a specific cat will show up? Well, I thought the same thing, and I'm very sorry to the person in chat that one stream that attempted to explain this in the 200 characters that YouTube allows. They tried to tell me early, and I uh, brushed it off because I'm a doo-doo head. My brain traveled back to statistics class and thought about rolling two dice and calculating the probability of two specific numbers showing up. There's a 1 in 36 chance that your two numbers will appear. Because there are literally 36 different variations these dice could give you. This right here is why I couldn't understand the 1 in 805 chance. There aren't 805 possibilities, only 391. So to make it easier for my logic chunk of brain to understand, I decided to throw it into percentages instead. Let's say I'm looking for Mary. Um, there's about a 2.86% chance that a cat will appear on the island. Going further and completing the second roll the game calculates for the specific villager, 1 divided by 805 is 0.0012, or 0.12% chance of Mary showing up on the island. Ta-da! Now this makes sense for my dumb brain. So, every time I used a Nook Miles ticket, there is a 0.12% chance that I didn't have to take any more of chat's Nook Miles tickets. It's impossible to find a villager on a mystery island that already resides on your main island. You can only have one of each character on your island, so you can't get doubles. I already have Zucker, an octopus, as a neighbor. This means that he is unable to show up on a mystery island and thus reduces the number of octopi I can find from 3 to 2. The new equation results in a higher chance of me finding octopi when I island hop. This increased from 0.9% chance to a 1.4% chance. A lot higher than the 0.12% chance of finding Mary. Which is why I found so many gosh darn octopi when villager hunting. Like, they were was invested. I'm gonna dispel some myths for you here. My chat was uh, full of them. First, villagers are not rolled based on personality or time of day that they are active. It is purely based on species. It does not matter how many of a specific personality you have on your island, nor does it matter if it's morning, evening, or night. The villagers on these deserted islands seem to not have a bedtime and can be found at any hour, any day, any month, any time of the year. Also, um, making Orville blush or clap or whatever does not work. The game has no idea which villager you're searching for, so it's kinda silly to assume that Orville will give you your dreamy if you make him blush. Stop trying to flirt, Orville and Wilbur aren't the type of birds to give you what you want based on your cuteness. There are statistical equations that tell you the percent chance of rolling the option you're hoping to get after already rolling a bunch of times. The game does not remember which villagers you have already seen. As a result, you're gonna get a bunch of doubles, triples, quadruples, or whatever the word is for how many times I saw Marina and Octavian because my god, I saw them so freaking much. While statistically, there was a 70% chance that I would find a Mary after a thousand tickets, it doesn't mean that I have a 70% chance of finding Mary. It stayed and always would be 
a 0.12% chance of finding her every time I showed up to an island. It's good to be aware that this is part of statistics, but don't let it fool you into guaranteeing you'll find a villager soon. There's a 99.88% chance you won't find that cat every time you visit an island. Like other ways to villager hunt, there are exceptions. The moving queue returns to be a pain in the butt. The four villagers that are held in your moving queue are unable to be found on a mystery island. The only way to check to see if your dreamy is in the queue is to scan the amiibo card. This becomes difficult if you don't have the amiibo card, or the card has yet to exist. And if you have the amiibo card, you're more likely to just use the amiibo rather than island hop like a crazy person. I guess the only way to ensure your dreamy is not in your queue is to not visit a friend's island who has your dreamy as a neighbor or had them as a neighbor. I believe the move-in queue is based off online interactions and isn't just random villagers that the game decides. They seem to only be villagers that are in your friend's void. Void villagers exist when a villager moves off an island and is not placed at someone else's island. This is how you get villagers that say they're from a specific island. Assume you only have one day to find a villager. If you've had an empty plot on your island, you've probably noticed that it sells to another villager relatively quickly. If you have villagers in your moving queue, they'll move in the next day no matter what. If your queue is empty, then every day at 5am, there is a very high chance that you will have a sold sign on your empty plot. The chances of the plot being sold increase every day and is reportedly extremely close to 100% chance on day 4. I'm not too sure what the actual percentages are, I wasn't able to find them online from a reliable source. But I will say that I have never had an open plot last more than one day, so my luck with that is atrocious. When you have an open plot, just assume that it's going to be filled the next day and find your villager on the day that the open plot appears. You can keep the plot open infinitely by time traveling and staying on the first day that the plot existed. For example, my open plot appeared on October 8th. Mary was freaking stubborn and took 12 real days to show up. Every day before I opened the game, I time traveled backwards to October 8th and then started up the game. This ensures that your plot won't be filled and you can get all the time you need to find your dreamy. You can only find and invite one villager per day from the islands. If you somehow have multiple open plots and try to villager hunt again on the same day, there will not be any animals at the island. You have to wait until the next day. The other hardship of this way of hunting is coming up with the Nook Miles tickets to actually hunt with. As chat reminded me many times, you can purchase your dreamy off Nookazon for probably less tickets than you will spend island hopping. I could have bought Mary 10 times with the 1,027 tickets I spent searching for her, except buying from Nikki. They know Mary's true worth. I'm in the process of collecting all the data for my own hunt. I'm not sure how lengthy of a video that will be, but I'll for sure throw all of you who are so dedicated to watching me find Mary some fun numbers and really see how many villagers I found and if I missed any with my 1,027 islands I visited. Have any questions about villager hunting? How many times did you ask me to use Nookazon or an amiibo to get Mary because you were so sick of watching me island hop? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye!